Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Unorthodox the Taco Guy. I'm going to try to cover an interesting episode today that I don't see really covered anywhere and it's kind of an exper experimental and niche thing. But there's a lot of people out there that actually do this. A lot. Like I've seen thousands and thousands of people who are into kind of like a, um, a niche crowd of having fun with figure photography. And being that you probably found this video, you might be curious about it yourself, wanting to experiment and have some fun with photography and, I don't know, get creative with it. And that's the biggest thing, it's imagination and creativity. It's very, 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 <laughs> the niche is the exact word you can describe for it, but it's fun. And the curiosity thing is, what do you need to get started? What should you do? Recommendations, stuff like that. I don't see anybody ever like covering this or recommending it. I literally ever saw one article ever, really, that was, I would say, informative and helpful. Uh, and that was someone who did something for, uh, I think it was Tokyo Otaku Mode, um, which was pretty cool. Alright, so I think I'm going to break this down into a couple uh, part episodes to really help people out and try to decide where they want to go and this is not a set guideline. These are recommendations and this is stuff that I do for my figure photography. And as you'll see in the bottom here, this is a small example of something um, of what you can do with figure photography. You can get creative with it, you can really experiment with it and make whatever you your heart desires, whether it be gaming, uh, anime, uh, superheroes, you name it. Right? It's, it's down to your imagination of what you want to do. So, on the very first episode, what I'm going to do is introduce is uh, what should you use in terms of the most, that's your core thing, uh, what you use to capture your photography with. So, uh, I'm going to recommend a couple of different things that you can do uh, across uh, photography, and I'm going to bring it down to, uh, you can be as simple as using your cell phone, which a lot of people do. A lot of people are big on Instagram. You'll actually see even my Instagram right here. I have a major setup of majority of my uh, figure photography on there, but I do not do my figure photography with the cell phone. I do not like it. It does not come out good in my opinion. Though that is my cell phone, that could be your cell phone could be better at taking photos. I know a lot of people who use cell phones who have great cameras in them and they just use apps to uh, edit them in, on their phone and then upload them straight to Instagram from there. So, if that's the route you wish to take, it's very simplistic, it's direct, and you can have a lot of fun with it and not get serious with it at all. So, diving with it forward, uh, the next step right in the line is a modern generation point and click camera. Now, modern point and click cameras are getting extremely, extremely good. And I'm going to pull up a quick little example that I can pop up and show you. Uh, let's see if I can pop it up for you here. Hold on one moment. <laughs> Should I have this set up ahead of time? Okay. All right, so all I'm gonna do is switch to a tab right there. That way you can see it, have it set up there. Uh, this was done with a point and click camera as such you'll see right here. This one is a Olympus 24 times wide uh, zoom. It's a SZ14, it's a 14 megapixel camera. Now, why I use this? No specific reason at all, except for the fact that it's got a good amount of megapixels, it takes great shots. It's got um, what is it? Uh, macro and super macro in it. Um, uses modern technology and everything. It's got a good sensor, uh, good for low lighting. And it was $5. And how is it $5? It was brand new in the box and it was at Goodwill. I always recommend people to go look for cameras at Goodwill. You will find cameras all the time at Goodwill. Actually, before I even continue on that, the camera I used to use 
for figure photography for a long time was actually from Goodwill as well. Now I spent probably maybe 15 bucks on this or whatever, but this is what really introduced me to stepping up further along the line. And give me one sec, I'm gonna switch back to my cam. There you go. Okay, so we have the Canon. This is the PowerShot S3IS. This was once an expensive camera, no longer expensive whatsoever. But it's got a lot of nice features in it for its age. Okay, it's got you know flip screen that you can set up there. Tons of features in the camera. It's got a lot of mechanical zoom in there. Built-in lens cover here. I can just flip on. Uh, it's got six by 72 millimeter uh, mechanical zoom, which is really good. Uh, so it's got a good amount of range for built-in, which is not bad. Uh, megapixel wise, it's six megapixel, but the sensor does good for what it is. Um, being that it is a lower megapixel, it's not a worst thing in the world. I've actually taken some decent shots with this, and I once again can throw you a nice example from my older days of taking shots with this. Uh, I'm gonna go straight to, let's see, this one right here. And this is a good example of an older shot I took with this camera, okay? So this shot was done with this camera here. This is my old Canon uh, S3IS, and it does a decent job. It has built-in macro, whatnot. You can get really creative with it, and I didn't break the bank on this. I spent maybe 15, maybe 30 tops on this. And what was nice is it actually came in that bag I took this out of, too. Um, modern technology, you know, it has an SD card. It doesn't use the clunky CFs. Um, the only thing that sucked about this one was it did use double A's, but that's actually not a bad thing either because some, you know, I used rechargeable double A's and I didn't have to go hunting down a special battery, a special charger. I just straight up used the camera and the shutter speed on this one isn't that bad. So it was actually something I used for quite a while for even car photography, which is actually pretty cool because it's normally you would need something with high speed shutter speed to take photos like that. The only thing is the processing speed was a little slower, so I'd only get one shut off every now and then, um, despite the shutter speed being fast enough. Okay, so that covers that. Go hunt at your Goodwills. You're not gonna find them every day. You're gonna have to, you know, go every now and then, but you are gonna get lucky. This $5 was brand new to the box, and it came with a four gigabyte card. Uh, you know, I, I can't explain how awesome this camera is. It has over 100 millimeters of mechanical zoom in it. It's really cool. It's got a multiplier in it. Um, it's like a $200 camera-ish, and I love it. Eric, bring it with me everywhere when it comes to doing my basic photography. Now, um, if you want to get more serious into doing stuff, uh, you step into either your full frame DSLRs or you go a mirrorless camera. And this is where the magic really happens when you take really good shots and you can really either keep them raw and they look really good raw or you can edit them in Photoshop. So I'm, once again, I'm going to step up to some of my favorites that I can go with in here and really break down why a DSLR of a high quality can make your shots just so good. And I'm actually going to go with my most recent shot that I completed. And I just finished this the other day. All right, and switch scene again. Here we are. Uh, this is my shot. This is part of my series, uh, Link versus Demon of the Four series, and this is part like six on it. But this is taking with a DSLR, and this is even completed. This is done. This has already got its after magic and whatnot. Um, if I you want to see what it actually can do, the cleanest. Here is a raw shot of the camera itself. Now it is going to have, um, actually I should probably go over here, okay. Um, no, it's got minor edits to it. So this is raw, raw as possible. So you can see here, um, this is a raw shot, unedited, uh, of the camera. You're going to have different focal zones on it where some are going to be blurred or not. And we're going to get into that later about if you want to use something like this, you're going to need to do layering and blend in stuff depending on what you want in focus, what out of focus, stuff like that. And that's where a lot of magic afterwards of Photoshop comes into play when it comes to doing editing. Some people do not like doing Photoshop editing or anything like that. I myself am a fan of doing Photoshop editing. I believe it brings out a lot of magic in a photo and it's a lot of fun. I have the most fun 
editing, so I had no problems whatsoever when it comes to that type of stuff. Um, you see here, uh, this is there's a use of like some after props to hang stuff, and then you have like you know you set up your scene. This has foreground and background, and we're gonna go over those little bit of things here. But um, this was taken with my Canon. Uh, this is a Rebel T5 uh, DSLR. Now this camera is technically quite outdated and low on the tier line of the T's. Um, T5, uh, they have even the next one up on it, T5i. There's the T6 and now the T7. Uh, personally, I am probably going to end up replacing this with a T7i eventually. Um, but what's nice is, as you get into full bodies, you can replace uh, your bodies and reuse your lenses. As long as you stay within your family, otherwise you got to get like adapters and stuff. There's no guarantee of working. So, myself, I do like to stay within the Canon family. Uh, just my personal thing. Uh, I would recommend either Canon or Nikon, um, but if you want to go Sony, I would say Sony's mirrorless is a really good. So it just depends on what you want to experiment with and how much you're willing to spend on a camera. I will say when it comes to these, you are going to spend probably around $500 or something like that, but you can do some either bartering, which is what I did. I did not buy this camera. I bartered stuff that I already had, um, or you can go hunting on terms of Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or something of the equivalent and try to get yourself a good deal or maybe even sit wait and save up until Black Friday Black Friday these cameras always go on sale so never pay full price for a high quality camera you are very likely going to get a really good deal you just have to play patient and do a little bit of research or even just find someone who's doing an upgrade you're gonna find someone who is going to get rid of their old body like such and upgrade to their new camera and get rid of their older body they might have spare lenses or something of the sort like me um, I think after I upgrade to my uh, my T7 I'm probably gonna end up giving the T5 to my girlfriend but you know that's a good example of why like you know you're gonna find someone who's gonna go down and hand-me-downs these types of cameras and they're sweet like they're really good cameras it's rock solid um it's built tough this is used even it's like mint condition that doesn't serve me any problems and the lenses you can you can even use older lenses you're gonna lose some features but you can get creative with it so i hope this help breaks down what you should and shouldn't use a come to what you'd want to expect to, to take photos for figure photography and I won't even get into like the specifics of the types of lenses um, because I actually, all my shots that I've been taking with, uh, even in figure photography, I've been using with the general 1855 lens that comes with my uh, Canon. And it's known as a pretty good well-rounder lens. I haven't gotten any more lenses yet. Lenses are expensive. I plan, I actually tried to get one recently and unfortunately it was a good deal and someone snagged it before I did. So. You gotta go, you gotta keep your eyes out if you wanna do even hunting with that. People are hunting for cheap lenses. They're really expensive. It was like a 200 something dollar lens. I almost got it for 120 and someone snagged me to, to it. So, is what it is. Anyways, uh, I hope this gave you an idea what you should do in terms of uh, photography with cameras and what to expect from them. So, uh, demonstrating them here even with an older camera you can make some great shots. So don't be disheartened just because you may not have a $500 camera to drop on something. You can still use your phone or some sort of cheap point and click camera and still have excellent results. So um, this covers camera type episode. Stay tuned for the next episode. I'm gonna be popping up shortly where you I'm going to demonstrate just a couple more recommendations of things you, you can do to make your figure photography just that much better. All right. Until the next episode, you see me. Thank you so much for watching, and remember to stay orthodox.